Greetings friend, entrepreneur, and fellow business builder. I'm marketing master Jim Ackerman, and welcome to Biz Kaboom, the program where we help you discover how to market more effectively in your business. You know, uh, I want to share with you an interview I did recently with J.P. Morgan. No, not the banker. This is one of the most famous photographers uh, and videographers in all of Hollywood. And, and when I say Hollywood, I'm not talking about the side of Hollywood that necessarily is doing movies, but J.P. Morgan does the photography for the stars and for the movies, and also he does photography and videography for commercial reasons. He also, and this is what I want to share with you in this particular interview, has a channel of his own on YouTube called The Slanted Lens. And what he's going to share with us today is how to build your own YouTube channel. I think you'll find the interview interesting. Let's have a look. Today we're talking to J.P. Morgan, who is one of the planet's foremost professional commercial videographer and photographers. He's worked for clients like Disney, MGM, Universal, FedEx, and NBC. So he's one of the top there is, but I recognize that you're trying to figure out whether you should be using video in your business, and I thought, why not go to the best to find out the answer? And JP, thanks for joining me on Biz Kaboom. It's great to be here, absolutely. So, um, small business people. Uh, I mean, really small business people. Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, I'm a small I, business. Right, right exactly, and so am I. And, uh, you know, it's, a lot of these folks may have, uh, you know, half a million dollars a year as annual revenue, and might go up to five million a year, but they, they're nervous about, and quite frankly, probably cannot afford to do Big time productions They're not like invest you know, in that kind of production, exactly. Yeah. But videos become so important. Can they get away with not doing it at all? Oh heavens, no, no. You can. I mean, we've gone through the days from here. We are with doing still images that people. That's a website, and that's what people see. To an age when everyone wants to see it move. With YouTube being one of the you know, second largest you, uh, search engines search out there. Sure. This next generation, if you want to appeal to the next generation, you have got to be uh, doing video. Okay, so this presents a tremendous conundrum for the average small business person. Obviously, to hire somebody like yourself is probably out of their reach. What if they want to do it themselves? Is, what, what is that, A, is that possible? And B, if it is, what, should they, what do they need to know to go about it? Well, there's a couple of things. It is possible, you know, but there's a bit of a learning curve there. I mean, the things that make it so difficult for people is one, getting access to any kind of equipment. Right. And uh, they don't have, though, to have the very best equipment out there. They can get a decent camera. Uh, if you can get decent sound, mm -hmm. you know, learn some basic things like being able to get a camera on a tripod, having a decent sound pickup so you get a good sound quality. You're not just trying to get sound off your camera. You have a secondary kind of sound service. You know, when I start, even as I'm saying this now, you know, I'm, the normal person is going to go, oh my word, this is already beyond me. But mm -hmm. So if you get a decent picture with decent sound, and then you can get on iMovie and you can put things together. And it, you know, most people who are intuitive with the computer at all, in three or four hours can figure out enough to put something together. It's okay. not super difficult, but it's super scary to people because they don't know. That's right. And that's, that can be a good thing or a bad thing. I mean, the, the fact that it is scary to most people keeps the playing field uh, a little clear. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't get in because they're afraid of it, and that can be a good thing in your, in your individual market. Uh, you mentioned iMovie in particular. Let's just so everybody knows, what is iMovie? And is, I know that that's a Macintosh program. Is there an alternative on, uh, for PC users? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's fair I, enough. I saw a PC once. <laughs> <laughs> that's, yeah, you're like me that way. Yeah, I've been using Macintosh <laughs> since 86. Yeah, no. You know. But my first Macintosh was a, it didn't have a hard drive in it. Right. right from the very beginning. Right. So, you know, iMovie is just a simple, intuitive, drop footage on the timeline, move them around and cut it. It's just a very simple program to use. For editing purposes. A lot of great purposes. tutorials for editing purposes online. You can look at two or three tutorials. And it's pretty easy to pick it up and figure out what to be able to do there. But uh, there's all kinds of other ones. If my son was here, who's a complete PC person, 
he edits on a couple of programs. I can't remember what they are, but there are great alternatives out there that are cheap. Mm -hmm. I mean, if Macintosh is cheap, PC is cheaper. Right. No so you can it. you can always Google yeah. video editing programs yeah. And, yeah. And, and find that. But you know what? If if I was a small business and I did not know how to do video, there's no question in my mind that I would find a local university. I would find students who there are taking a video class, and I wouldn't just ask a student to come and shoot my business. I would go see the instructor. Say, look. Can I be the case study for your students? Mm, Send nice all idea. your students over one at a time throughout the semester, have them do a video of my business, and now take all those and we'll have a party. I'll put food together, I'll create a little event at my place, we'll show all of them, and I'll give a, a $100 award to the person who gives the best video. Oh, yeah, I mean, there's I mean, just something one. to engage them. A lot of times classes are looking for projects to work on, you know, something to kind of gives them, get them going. So that was just you know, something I've suggested before to business owners, it's something you can do. You know, lots of small businesses, um, they pull out their cell phone and, and stick it on a selfie stick and, and push the button and try to talk uh, to people. Uh, and a lot of it feels like it's just off the cuff, you know, that hasn't been thought through in any way, shape, or form. What's the value and importance of having a script to start with? Boy, I struggle with this with my clients because they'll come to me, larger companies, you know, $52 million company, and they're going, can we just shoot on Thursday? And I'm going, no, we, we've <laughs> got to make an outline, then we've got to have a rough script. I think you're really smart to sit down and say, what are the things I want to, to convey about my business? You know, what kind of format will help me to say the things? You know, what are some pictures that will help me show what I want to convey about my business? Mm -hmm. And then just put those things, those, at least those bullet points down. So as you start doing your video, you can cover each bullet, bullet point and know what kind of visual is going to go with each one of those. That yeah, helps you kind of make a, a, a visual as well as a verbal script to go by. Right. Now you mentioned, let's make sure we get the, you know, the, the picture right. Then let's make sure we get the sound, sound right. right. Uh, you didn't mention lighting. You know, it's interesting. Nowadays, people are very comfortable with just natural light. So if you get yourself in a room and you're facing a window and you let your camera look back at you, most everyone's going to think you lit it just fine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Now, I come from a world of lighting where that drives me crazy. Right. But you know what? If I didn't have access to light, and I, my daughter called me up one day and she goes, Dad, i got to take a picture of my friend and I don't know what to do. I said, well, look, if you want it very dramatic, just go to the bathroom. Got a window behind you. Set her in front of you, point your camera at her, and that small window behind you will make a very small light on her face, and you just get a little below it, take a picture, and the pictures look pretty fabulous, mm -hmm. actually. So windows are great. Just get a window behind you. No, sorry, get a window behind the camera that's going to be a light towards you. Right, toward the subject. Towards the subject matter. So you're sitting in your chair looking out the window, then that gives you a, a, a great a bit of light. If you can start to work with some light and that, but it really becomes a level where now you gotta purchase equipment, you gotta have equipment or borrow equipment. I think you're better off just to use some natural light and uh, find something that'll work. So. You've mentioned in the past too that sound is so critical to video. Uh, you know, again, I use the example of somebody who's gone into the, uh, you know, they, they pull up their cell phone, they're taking a <laughs> selfie stick and it's out there six feet and everything sounds tinny and, uh, and sometimes you can't understand it and the, they turn away from the camera and you don't hear what they're saying and those kinds of things. What, what's some tips that they could do for sound to make sure that they don't make those mistakes? Boy, this one is, is more difficult. You can't use the camera sound. You just can't. It's too far away from the subject. It just doesn't sound good. So you've got to come up with some kind of a source to get a closer source like we're using today, lobs mm -hmm. underneath us, give us a nice full sound. Right. So you've got to come up with an alternate way to get your sound. And that's either a small piece of equipment like an N4. Actually, there's some smaller ones. I think there's an N2. Is it an N2? Anyway, they're like $150. Mm -hmm. You can just set that between them on a little uh, light stand. And for $200, you have a sound source that is a thousand times better than what you'll get on your camera. Uh, so so if, if we get a $200 roughly $200 uh, sound system, for lack of a better word, and then a camera. What, what are you going to recommend there and how much is a, a legitimate investment for them to make if they're going to be consistent with their videos? If you're a small business and you're going to be putting up videos on a regular basis, you'd be crazy not to buy a $150 tripod, Mm -hmm. A $600 camera like the uh, T4 or T5i. Is that a, a, is there a brand there, Canon? That's a okay. Canon. So that's a very simple camera. It'll give you a great video and great to work with. And then a $150 recorder. And then I would maybe buy one LED light or just 
use the window. Mm -hmm. So for under $1,000, you know, uh, you're going to be able to have a small little production kit that will give you nice videos. And then you get on iMovie or something on uh, PC and, and edit them together. So. Okay, finally, be, be, before we leave, talk to me about uh, how often somebody should put up a video or the need for, should there be consistency or one, you know, you talked about the idea of going to a website and there you see a video. Uh, is there a need for multiple videos? Uh, absolutely. People have got to feel like your site and your business is vibrant. Things are happening. So I would create a schedule for myself, and it could start just being once a month. Mm -hmm. You can put something new on each month and see what kind of response I get. It could be something you're going to teach them about a need they have that will then return to your business. Like I'm going to teach you how to pick uh, the best colors for weddings this year. Well, mm -hmm. I'm a wedding planner or, you know, whatever. And right, Those kinds sure. of videos go up and they teach a principle that are, is helpful to people. That returns people back to you because there's a, a need and they will come back to you for business. So I think consistency, there's nothing more important than consistency. A video one month and five the next, and then three months before you do the next one is just not going to create any kind of a following, not gonna create any kind of a uh, cohesive, you know, these people come to your website for, for the needs they have. Gotcha. Any final word of advice, because we're out of time? It's really, I can't emphasize enough, I really can't emphasize enough that you have to do video. Uh, it's, the, it's the future of your website, of your business, and you have either got to find someone who can do it for you or you've got to conquer it yourself. But not doing it, it just leaves you behind in the marketplace. Terrific. J.P. Morgan, thank you for joining me on Biz Kaboom today. We'll You're have right you back thing. soon. Thank you very much. And you stay tuned. We've got more. I'd like to thank J.P. Morgan for that terrific interview, and certainly you should be subscribing to The Slanted Lens if you have any aspirations to do a YouTube channel or a video channel of your own. That's, uh, that's Biz Kaboom for today, but stay tuned. We've got more stuff coming, and uh, you can take a look at our marketing tip of the day that's released every other week, and our good, bad, and ugly ad segment that we release as well, along with other interviews and more in-depth stories that we provide on a regular basis so that you can up your game in the world of marketing in your continued effort to get more customers who will pay you more money more often, the fastest, easiest, most cost-effective ways possible.